Let's speak to Fadil Abdel Ghani. He's the chairman and founder of the Syrian Network for Human Rights. He joins us now from Doha. Fadil Abdel Ghani, thank you very much indeed for your time. Why now? Why have these attacks over the past two weeks been taking place? What's the logic, do you think, of the regime and its supporters in Moscow? I think after uh, the Moscow failed that Asitana completely failed and the regime, uh, the Geneva process will start again. They try now to seize as possible territory as they can. What does Asitana mean? Because the Russian goal actually to achieve uh, after they seized Ghouta, Idlib, uh, north of Hamas, uh, to, to achieve political achievement, actually. So, and th they failed completely to rehabilitate Assad again, start uh, refugees back to Syria, reconstruction. So, uh, and they failed now, they concrete that the Geneva process, and we have lots of comment and criticism as well to the Geneva process, they might also start again. So, they want now to launch this huge operation, which is the massive uh, operation against civilians and uh, lots of war crimes and co crimes against humanity have been committed since the beginning of this recent uh, operation. And that doesn't mean that there is no uh, previous operation taking place and uh, lots of violation of Asitana uh, agreement uh, taking place before. Uh, since the beginning of uh, September 2018 till now, about 600 civilians have been killed in uh, northwest uh, Syria, in Idlib and around Idlib, and about uh, one million Syrian uh, forcibly uh, displaced. But uh, the aim of Moscow as well to achieve uh, plus what I mentioned, uh, also they want to uh, destroy any resistance from the uh, armed opposition group, which is the opposite uh, Moscow uh, achievement. And they want also uh, the international road fr between Aleppo and Damascus to be under their control to rise the uh, Assad economy again, which is, I, I think, also this is, uh, will be impossible. Do you think it's inevitable now that it must happen eventually that Russia and the regime in Damascus will launch a full-scale assault to regain control of all of Idlib? That will bring the entire Syrian territory back in control of Bashar al-Assad. I don't think that they have the ability, and they uh, found that there is uh, types of resistance in uh, in Idlib, actually, uh, and in not only in Idlib. We just mentioned Idlib, and I think this is also a mistake. It's uh, uh, northwest uh, uh, Syria, uh, better term actually, because now the mainly operation taking place in north of Hama, uh, uh, and and here is the main resistance coming from. The the uh, opposition group, and uh, and I think that the Assad and the Iranian as well, because the Iranian militia merged to uh, Assad army as well, they don't have the ability to seize all of this uh, territory. But here we have actually comment that uh, the international community l l left abandoned abandoned Syrian and also they uh, put the responsibility under the guarantor's shoulder alone okay now and blaming Turk, Turkey and and Iran and Russia okay Turkey they have res their responsibility we believe in that but that doesn't mean and that very sensitive point that the uh, international community the United States the European country just uh, keep watching and monitoring the crimes against humanity and war crimes. Fighting those, actually, the, this responsibility for the UN Security Council, which they failed after their meeting, we just uh, watched condemns and, uh, and general talks, that mean agreement, uh, that mean a a agree, actually, what they are, uh, uh, the, the Russian doing on, on the ground in Syria. And Father, also can, the Father, UN do you mind? Do you mind? I just want to, uh, we're running out of time, so let me just ask you, how much do you think the international community is standing back and letting this happen because of the existence in that part of Syria of groups like uh, Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, which almost everybody agrees is a terrorist organization? Clearly, there are other sorts of people who are fighting against Bashar al-Assad, but the existence of groups like uh, uh, al-Sham 
Does that make it more complicated for the international community to say you should stop? Of course, and uh, and the main uh, actually damage they, uh, from uh, those extremist group is the Syrian society. They occupied the Syrian society, so they are not only fighting Bashar al-Assad, but they are fighting also the rebels. Also, they are fighting both sides. They have this uh, occasion zero, and they want only themselves. Actually, that of course you are right. That will be more complicated. But we do, didn't see this is the way how to treat with those and how. To to get rid of those group out of Syria. Uh, the, 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 the treatment should be in other way, actually, and to enhance and to support the society, the Syrian society, similar what's happened, what's, what happened in, in other area, like, uh, for example, in Al Farad Shield, support the local people in order to defeat the extremist group, not only to bomb the civilians and kill everyone, and by, by justification that we are fighting ISIS or Hayat Tahrir sham or whatever that's not the way that that will lead for a catastrophe disaster what we are what we are seeing and 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 as you know that all the international uh, aid organizations stopped because the, they said this area is uh, seized by Hayat Tahrir sham so the civilians and the IDP also they are they left alone without any types of uh, aid actually uh, really appreciate your time. Fadil Abdul Ghani speaking to us from Doha, from the Syrian Network for Human Rights. Thank you, Fadil.